This episode was sponsored by Motion Array with over 700,000 downloadable assets for making better videos fast. This is Exebo. This looks like an ordinary, boring ass motion controlled slider, but it's not. It has a superpower. Engine started. In addition to the normal party tricks such as time lapses, VFX shots, and interviews, this slider can tether to Unreal Engine and using the Exebo's web based app, triangulate its position in real space as well as virtual space. And using a standard repeatable motion controlled function, bypass 90% of the processor and graphics card's requirements to tether with virtual productions. You see, it understands. You guys build self-driving software for autonomous car companies. What the hell are you guys doing building sliders? Now, you may remember these guys from my Kickstarter last year. These two are the brainiacs behind the Marble Orbit's stealth drive function. Needless to say, they know how to make motors work and they also know high level programming used in autonomous vehicles. Now, the reason why this slider is exciting is because this is the same technology that's being used on those giant robot arms that are tethered to virtual productions, except this is just on a much smaller, more pedestrian scale. Now, to give you a little bit of context, virtual production is the wild west of filmmaking right now. Everyone, even on a small scale, is trying to get their hands on it. An LED stage can take an entire crew and its gear intact across the world we're back in time in just a few minutes. So we've all seen The Mandalorian and know that Disney spent a ridiculous amount of money to create these massive LED volumes. Now to the normal observer, LED stages replace conventional green screens, but it's so much more. Its advantages is that lighting wraps around the subject naturally, it gives the actors real stimuli to interact with, but above all else, provides many more locations to be shot efficiently on stage as opposed to on location. Now the biggest barrier to entry is the sheer cost. Disney spent a full Hollywood blockbuster movie budget on just building one stage. And it's reported that 90 million of it was spent on creating Helios, the rendering platform that allows these computer generated backgrounds to go from looking like this to looking like something like this. Now, obviously, we don't have a Disney budget, so we can't do anything of that scale. But there are a ton of filmmaker creators out there that are creating their whole entire worlds and sets using things at their disposal. OK, so how do we do this and where does Exebo fit in? First, you need a screen, which we'll dive into in a second. After that, you need a camera with a 12G SDI output like the Red Komodo, Blackmagic 12K, Blackmagic Ursa 4.6K G2. This gives you Genlock and Genlock allows you to sync the camera's frame rate to the computer's refresh rate so that the exact motion and parallax will look real. And then you need some sort of tracking system for the camera movement, like a puck. Explain this to me like I'm sick. Meet my friend Data. What does that do? So this we call a puck. Uh, we attach it to the camera so then it can get where it is in real space. You guys also triangulate that with, yes. this is a laser? So this has lasers that would push out and all these little bumps on here, it'll see those. So and this, know goes, this, is. this goes up in the ceiling. Yep and then this will go on the camera or the person, depending on what you're trying to track. Now, without going down the rabbit hole of how this process is done, what Exebo does is it takes these steps out. One of the workarounds that you guys have figured out is with Unreal Engine, you normally need a really beefy computer. But what we're working with now is that you guys are actually exporting out the render as a video, and then you're able to loop it into your slider through the website. That's one of the great things about robots is that we can record motion and we can play back motion. So robots like Exebo, we can pre-render the software in the cloud, send it to people, send them a nice video clip that they can use as the backdrop for the shot that they're doing and match it to the movement of the robot. So you guys are taking the telemetry of the motion control slider in real space and then you're just taking that math and putting it into Unreal Engine. We take that information, we use it to render the scene so we can render it really high qualities like 4K, 8K that people can use to play back again. And they don't have to do that. They can just run it from anything that's got an HDMI port. You could run it from a laptop? Yeah, totally. Remember, this is a motion controlled slider. So it, it knows the exact coordinates of the motors. Let's see if we can break this down. With Exebo, the tilt pan and slide positions can be recorded. That motor telemetry is transferred over into virtual space into Unreal Engine. Exebo gives us a plugin in Unreal Engine that will create a virtual camera with these same properties. We plug in the sensor size and lens focal length of our physical camera and the background of this virtual world should match the optics and parallax of the physical world. We can then generate any backgrounds we want in Unreal Engine and then use them in our physical world. In the settings of the Exebo plugin, we can insert the IP address for the Exebo's onboard Wi-Fi chip. 
And now we have the two worlds tethered. Movement in the physical world will mean movement in the virtual world. Now there's a little bit of a delay, but that can be adjusted for live renders. What's even cooler, you can just export this recorded background as a video and then open it up in the Exibo's web app viewer and it will trigger the movement and play the background at the same time. Put this up on a screen, place an object in between and boom, you got a virtual production. No 12G SCI camera, no massive render computer, no tracking system. It's all done with math. I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Motion Ray. I use a ton of digital assets when I'm making these episodes, and I've been a paying customer Motion Ray for many, many years now. They have over 700,000 assets ranging from drag and drop Premiere Pro templates, stock videos, music files, and really cool HUD graphics that I use more than I should. With a Motion Array subscription, you can sign up for a month or a year, and you can download whatever you want and use it any project anywhere. There's no other fees. The license is included. Downloads are super fast, and I find the templates for Premiere and After Effects are easy to use and come with instructions. Remember those effects in Anamorphia 2? After Effects template. Motion Array is the quickest way to make your videos look great. It's my secret sauce. You can try it now. Link down below. You don't get all the assets, but they do have hundreds of free ones you can download and use right now. They even include a built-in collaboration platform called Review, so giving notes to editors on your projects couldn't be easier. $29 a month, but you get a deal for the annual. And if you sign up now with my link, you get an extra $50 off the annual price. That's a little bit more than $16 a month. So use the link below and get on my level. There it is. Keep in mind, this is a slider first, so it can do all the fun stuff like time lapses and interview modes. And I think the most impressive thing is that the motors are strong enough that you can go almost a full 90 degree slide, which is pretty rad. You don't normally see those in sliders. So straight out the box, the Exibo PT4 comes in two cases, the pan tilt head and the 30 inch slider. Inside the pan tilt head case, the coolest part is the knockoff PS4 controller. It comes synced and ready to use. Then you have some power cables, brackets, and the brain. The brain has a built-in camera and Wi-Fi chip for its subject tracking function, which we'll test out later. The system is powered with the 12 volt DC power cable, or you can use two NPF batteries. With the motor, there's a little bit of assembly involved but it's all pretty intuitive it takes about two minutes and once it's in place three ethernet cables are connected the unit fires up and it orients itself automatically then it's ready to use now i was very impressed with the pan tilt head it can hold a camera and lens payload up to 22 pounds if you think about it that's a pretty big combination it's much bigger than i normally use and you don't need to balance it the motors are that strong you can control it with the web-based app which can be accessed on desktop tablet or phone or in my case you can use the game controller which for most run-of-the-mill slider shots like interview or vfx plates you don't need the app on the controller to pan or tilt hold down the l1 button then move the left thumbstick to slide the unit on the track press left or right on the directional pad the large square center button is a stop function for any movement to program waypoints for interviews go to the first location then hold down the x for two seconds then go to your next location and hold down square then press circle to initiate back and forth loop function. You can change the speed by pressing the up or down arrows on the directional pad. Now this is where the system breaks away from other motion control slider units and we dive into the virtual production stuff. Which means uh, we're going to have to get a screen. Easy does it. Nice and slow. This is a bad idea. So I managed to score an 86 inch television off Amazon for about 1500 bucks. This thing is taller than me. I think out of all of the virtual production options out there, this may be the least expensive way yet. For movies, probably too small, but for product shots, it could work. This is by far the biggest television I've ever bought. I don't even watch TV. Like if you had a television this big, what's the first thing that you would do? Oh yeah. So fing good. So good. Now that we got that out of the way, let's dive into this and see if we can make our own virtual production shots. Let's get weird. We're in my studio. It looks different. This is a virtual production. This is actually just an 86 inch television. I got it off of Amazon for about 1500 bucks. Weird science. Elastic tubes and buttons, bits and pieces, and magic from the hands of making weird science. I've never seen before. I think what would seal in the deal is if I had like a set of plants right here that this could kind of slide through. Got my plant set up here and then I put another piece of plant right over here. That way when this thing slides down, it's having to slide through physical objects. Is 
is pretty exciting. We finally got it set up for our nighttime shot. Now there's the very real argument of like, why don't you just do green screen? Why go through all this? You definitely can, and Unreal Engine allows you to use green screen with this technology as well. So you could still just do a green screen. The main difference is that when you're shooting through things like glass or ref having reflections, it's very tricky to paint out the green screen. That's where having a real screen that's shooting light through works a lot better. I know it's wild, it's crazy, and there's still a lot of this that I don't know, so I'm not an expert. The immersive capabilities are just, I mean, this is the future of filmmaking. It's very exciting. The last feature to cover is the tracking function. The Exibo has a wide angle lens on the front that you can use for subject tracking, but in the app, you can switch to the HDMI feed and it will track from whatever camera you have plugged in. Now tracking is super simple. Click the tracking window in the app and you should automatically see the trackers pop up. Click the subject and it will start. There we go. And we are tracking me. This is a brand new company that's starting up. I think that they're still fine tuning this, but let's see how good this tracking is. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this lens and see if it can get more specific. Wow, so the focus box actually gets more specific. So it's tracking through the camera. You can specify the tracking box location and even tell the slider to slide back and forth while tracking. This is pretty damn cool. What do you guys think? Is this a function you would ever use? I wanna know, let me know in the comments. So I do wanna emphasize that I've been working with this company for months now on this video because nothing came easy. You know, I've gone through several iterations of their slider and the one that they most recently sent me is amazing. It feels great, the motors sound great. They've ironed out a lot of the bugs and all the issues that they've had with their Kickstarter backers. And so now they're, they're ready to take the slider to market. So if you're at all interested in the virtual production side of this, they are rolling out a pilot program for the first 50 people that order this they're going to help guide you through the virtual production that pipeline of unreal engine 4 and 5 because it is kind of a challenging workflow and it's kind of like the wild west right now and they're willing to take that extra step to help guide you guys on there so i can't wait to see what you guys make with this i'm definitely going to be using this in my workflow going forward so hopefully you guys will see more of this probably use it in anamorphia 4 or 5. oh that'd be sick anyway this is josh Joe saying thank you very much stay creative go make smart hey does anybody want coffee who wants coffee? I just made a fresh pot of coffee.